All right, question of the week, Inblex Review number 25. Our question is, which of the following joints is also known as a condyloid joint? Is it going to be A, hinge joint, B, saddle joint, C, ellipsoid joint, or D, pivot joint? One more time. Which of the following joints is also known as a condyloid joint? Is it hinge, saddle, ellipsoid, or pivot? So I'll give you a few moments to work on this one, and then we'll go ahead and head over to the explanation. All right, so in the community tab, I asked you which of the following joints is also known as a condyloid joint. And we had a great turnout here. We had 27 votes. 30% of you said it was a hinge joint. 33% of you said it was a saddle joint. 30% of you said it was an ellipsoid joint. And then 7% of you said it was a pivot joint. And then thank you to the five people who liked this post. So a majority of you said it was a saddle joint joint. So let's go ahead and see if this is the correct answer. Now there are six types of synovial joints. Synovial joints consist of articulating bones. That means that bones that meet together that are surrounded by joint capsules. And within their joint capsule, there is synovial fluid, which reduces friction during joint movements by lubricating the joint's cavity. Now we will briefly cover each one of these today. So the very first one we have is a ball and socket joint. This is a ball-like end of one bone that fits into a cup-like socket of another, allowing for movement in every plane. So for example, we have the hip, which is known as the acetabular femoral joint, and we have the glenohumeral joint, which is known as the shoulder. These are considered ball and socket joints. Next, we have gliding joints. This joint is formed when two flat surfaces of bones articulate, allowing for small shifting movements. For example, we have the intertarsals and intercarpal joints. Again, these are small bones that are only able to slightly glide past one another. This synovial joint has the least movement than any other synovial joints. So we have the intertarsal and the intercarpal joints, which only slightly glide past one another. Next, we have a hinge joint. This joint functions like a hinge on a door, a door that we would only be able to open and close in one direction or in one plane, allowing for either flexion and extension only. For example, we have the tibiofemoral joint, which is also known as the knee. We have the humeral ulnar and humeral radial joint, also known as the elbow. And then we have the interphalangeal joints, which are also hinge joints. All of these are considered hinge joints, allowing for only flexion and extension in one plane. Next, we have a pivot joint, which allows for rotation around an axis. For example, the joint between C1 and C2 of the vertebrae, also known as the allantoaxial joint, and the joint at the proximal end of the radius, that allows the radial head to rotate around a ring made of annular ligament, allowing for supination and pronation at the forearm. Again, we have the pivot joint, which only allows for rotation around an axis. Next, we have a condyloid joint. This joint's formed when an oval-shaped surface fits within an ellipsoidal socket or cavity. So here we have the oval-shaped, which fits within this socket or ellipsoidal socket or cavity. Therefore, this joint is also known as an ellipsoidal joint, which allows for flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. For example, we have the radiocarpal joint where the distal end of the radius forms an ellipsoidal socket, which meets the scaphoid carpal, which creates an oval-shaped surface. This is the radiocarpal joint, as well as the metacarpal phalangeal joints, where the metacarpal bones meet the proximal phalanges, creating a condyloid joint. And then we have the metatarsal phalangeal joints where the metatarsals meet the proximal phalanges, creating this condyloid joint here as well. So we have condyloid joints. These are formed when oval-shaped surfaces fit with an ellipsoidal socket or cavity. And then finally, we have a saddle joint. This joint is formed within the surface of a convex bone, fits within the concave surface of another, allowing for a wider range of movement, such as flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, as well as circumduction. For example, we have the trapezial metacarpal joint, where the metacarpal's convex base of the thumb, so here we have the convex base of the thumb meets the concave. So here it is, the concave trapezium carpal of the wrist. So notice how it caves in. That's how I remember it, convex and then concave, the bone is caving in, as well as the sternoclavicular joint, where the convex 
surface of the clavicle meets the concave surface of the sternum. Again, notice how the sternum caves in, concave. Now we have to be careful here because saddle joints are similar to condyloid joints. I read that saddle joints are modified ellipsoid joints. However, they are saddle shaped, allowing for a wider range of movement, such as the thumbs, trapezial metacarpal joint, allowing for circumduction, giving us the ability to twiddle our thumbs or do circles with your thumbs when your fingers are interlocked. However, this is a saddle joint. Remember, it is saddle shaped. Do not get that confused. So let's look at this question again. Which of the following joints is also known Known as a condyloid joint. So hopefully you remember when I covered condyloid joints. I said that this was an oval shaped surface. So here's our oval shaped surface. One end of a bone fits within the ellipsoidal socket or cavity of another. This is also known as an ellipsoidal joint allowing for flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. So an example of that is the radiocarpal joint, where the distal end of the radius, which creates an ellipsoidal socket, meets the carpal or the scaphoid carpal, which is an oval-shaped surface. This condyloid joint is also known as an ellipsoidal joint. So the correct answer here is C, an ellipsoidal joint. So 30% of you got this answer correct. Now, if you were part of the 33% that said it was a saddle joint, you have to be very careful. You have to remember that saddle joints are similar to condyloid joints. However, they are modified ellipsoidal joints. They are saddle shaped, which allow for a wider range of movement, such as the trapezial metacarpal joint, which allows for circumduction, giving us the ability to twiddle our thumb. So we have to be careful there. The correct answer here is the ellipsoidal joint. Now, if you did not get this answer correct, I would encourage you to dive back into your textbooks and make sure you understand the six types of synovial joints before you go into the emblex. All right, y'all have a wonderful week ahead and I will see y'all in the next question of the week. Y'all take care.